Alright, so you want to make flies in Blender. Let me break it down for you. First, we need to make our actual fly object. So go onto Google or your favorite image site and try to find a top-down clear picture of a fly and then save it to your computer. Then in Blender, let's create the geometry. For this, I just added a cube that was 8mm big and then scaled it down on the X and Z axes. The flies are so small it doesn't really matter what they look like, but just to round things off, I added a subdivision surface modifier with a couple of steps. After that, just apply the modifier, then right click and shade smooth. Now before we can apply our image texture, we need to sort out the UVs. So down the bottom left, click on the little icon and open up the UV editor. Drag that up to make it bigger and then open up your image. Then before we go any further, click Ctrl A on your mesh and apply scale. Then tap into edit mode, select everything and press U, project from view. Now down the bottom in the UV editor, just select all the mesh and scale it and stretch it so it covers our entire fly. Okay, now with the UV sorted, we need to actually apply this image as a material. So click on the same icon and go into the shade editor. Click this button to create a new material. Then add in an image texture node, open up our fly image and connect it to the base color of our principled BSDF. And voila, you have a fly. You can mess with the roughness or any of the other settings to dial in the look if you want to go further, but this is it. Now with that out of the way, time to create the actual swarm. So again, click on that little button and then change it to the timeline and bring it down. Then we need an object to act as our emitter. Here I just used an icosphere, and I scaled it down and repositioned it. Very important once again, click Ctrl A and apply the scale. Cool, now with the icosphere selected, head over to the particle tab and create a new particle system. Now if you press play, you can see it's spinning out a bunch of spheres. So under the render tab, head over to render as and change it to object. And let's choose our fly object. Then set the scale to 1 and you can set the scale randomness to something like 0.25. This just varies up the size of the flies a bit. Now scroll to the top and change the number of flies to something like 100 and the start and end frames to 1. So all the flies get emitted at the same frame. This just makes sure all the flies exist from the very start of your timeline. Then head down to lifetime and change it to something very high. This is how long the flies exist before they disappear. Right, now for the actual physics of it. Open up the physics tab and change the physics type to voids. And change the mass to something very low like 0.025. Then just go a little bit further down and open up the void brain. Get rid of everything except separate and add in a new rule called follow the leader. And set the object to just a random object in your scene. I use this mannequin for testing purposes. Next, just scroll up and open the movement tab. These are the settings I used here, but depending on your scene, you want to experiment with these to dial in the look you want. You can just copy what I have out right here, but I recommend just messing around to see what they do. Every scene is different and you will need to experiment with these numbers to get something you're happy with. It's easy to get frustrated here because it's a lot of trial and error, but just stick with it and mess around until you get something you like. And once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Cool, so we've made our swarm, but I want to show you how to actually use this in your scenes. Back under our particle settings, under the render tab, turn off show emitter, so the actual icosphere doesn't show up in your renders. Then for the sake of organization, just rename your emitter and your fly object, and place them both in a collection by clicking M and naming the collection something like fly. With that done, just save your scene, which you should have done multiple times before this, and open up your project file that you want to put the flies in. Awesome possum. In your new scene, head over to file and then append and find the file where you save the flies. Head over to collection and open up that fly collection that we made. Inherently, this will bring in the object the flies were following and we don't really want this. So just get rid of that and click on the icosphere and go to the void brain. And under follow the leader, you can set the new object to whatever you want. In this scene, I'm just using these trash bags. Once you're happy with everything, it's time to cache our simulation. So under your particle settings, find the cache tab and set your substeps to something like 2 to 6. This does some extra calculations in between each of our frames, which is not visible, except in the motion blur. This will make our motion blur look nicer. Then just hit the bake button and watch it cache your entire timeline. Personally, after I've cached, I like to set my start frame to 100, so you can't see the flies going from the emitter to the trash can. And yeah, you're pretty much done. I additionally went back under the particle render settings and increased the size of the flies, but this is not necessary and you can do whatever you like. Lastly, making sure you're in cycles, turn on motion blur, and you're ready to render. Yep, that's about it. Uh, if you learned something, consider leaving a like, uh, share it with your friends, show it to your boss, and send it to your grandma. So with that said, I think I've taken up enough of your time today, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.